Hey everyone, I'm Diana Davison, and this week in Canada, the breaking story for the last few days has been that a conservative politician named Patrick Brown was suddenly ousted. He was the favorite to win an upcoming election in Ontario, and then overnight, completely, his career has been destroyed. Destroyed by allegations published on CTV by a reporter who, well, there's two reporters, but one of them is actually very, very good friends with one of the accusers. And this relationship was not divulged to the public, and even if it was, she should not have been working on this story. Very suspicious with an upcoming election, and this is important because um, whether or not you like Patrick Brown, we need to live in a country where our elections can't be rigged. Okay, so everybody's talking about these accusations about Brown, whether or not, because the accusations actually didn't include anything criminal, whether or not this was fair play. But nobody is talking about a more important story, and that is that Jagmeet Singh, who is the current leader of the NDP, that's New Democrat Party, basically for people not in Canada, it's our Socialist Party. I like to refer to it as the No Due Process Party. And that was proven definitively when Jagmeet Singh came out to talk about these accusations against Patrick Brown. He says, and listen carefully. Well, there's two different issues here. Uh, if you're asking me when I was a lawyer, uh, on in a legal lens, there is a discussion or presumption of innocence, but that's strictly about the, the procedures in court. When it comes to creating a just society, we need to look at the reality that we have to believe survivors if we want to tackle violence against women. Yes, a former lawyer is saying that in Canada, presumption of innocence is just a discussion, and it's strictly a discussion that we have in the courtrooms. Now, he's right. In Canada, our rights are enshrined in the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, but Section 1 allows for reasonable limits on any of those rights. And generally it's said, you know, you can limit rights if it's for the public good. Now, a well-known example is um, freedom of speech, right? We have hate speech laws that actually violate your freedom of speech, freedom of expression, but it's considered to be for the public good to limit these with our hate speech laws. So essentially what Singh is saying is that if he becomes prime minister, he thinks that the public good is something that we can consider to limit the charter rights of an accused person that would infringe upon the presumption of innocence and probably the burden of proof. So that could be the leader of Canada in the future and nobody is talking about it. I actually was hesitant to believe that it really happened even though the one report that was published on Huffington Post was not repeated. There was no validation that it actually happened until I found the actual video clip of it. I was hesitant to believe he actually said it himself. But it's more horrifying that nobody is talking about it. So let's go back to the allegations against Patrick Brown. He is being accused of basically hitting on really young women. One of them was taken home from a bar. She had been drinking. Patrick is a well-known teetotaler. He doesn't drink at all which does make it a little bit odd that apparently he hung out at a bar in Barrie. Um, but anyways, it's not illegal. He thought that she was of age. Apparently she had fake ID or something like that. Nobody cares. They're just assuming he should have known because she was so young that they just find it creepy. Canada's most beloved prime minister, and in fact our current prime minister's father, was twice the age of his mother, met her when she was 18 years old. But apparently that's okay. But now Patrick Brown can't be in politics. So... That's the nature of the allegations, just that he was hitting on young women. They even say that when they asked him to stop, he did, and in one case drove her home again. So no crimes have been committed. He's just basically not allowed in politics because he likes younger women. As most people who were around 40 get quite flattered when somebody who's half their age starts flirting with them. Now, as was published by Frank Magazine, one of the authors of this breaking news story, and he was only given two hours before this story broke, I think that that's really questionable in terms of media ethics, along with the following. One of the authors, Rachel Aiello, used to work at the Hill Times with one of the accusers. There's no publication ban on her name, and one of the accusers is named Chelsea Nash. So, typically, a reporter should not have a close relationship with one of their sources, and these allegations, aside from not actually being criminal, um, they were intended to destroy a man's career. Uh, they published it with only two hours notice to Mr. Brown. Now, keeping in mind that we need to be concerned about rigged elections, 
It was posted on Twitter that Kathleen Wynne, who was trailing in the polls, apparently knew that there was a scandal that was going to break in advance. She supposedly was going around telling her followers to go ahead and donate to her because Patrick would be out of the race really soon. Now to top this all off, I happen to know a journalist who's had people from Barry offering to sell him stories about Patrick Brown to fatten up the accusations. Offering to sell stories. Our media consistently asks us to, they continue to ask us, even despite all the evidence, to trust them when they say that somebody is credible. And they have taken over the role of the police, they've taken over the role of the courts. This is a court, the court of public opinion, where you have a prosecutor and you have no defense lawyer. There's nobody presenting the other side of the story, and there's no judge vetting, by rule of law, what evidence can be put forward. So you've only got one side of a narrative, and you've got a conviction, as we can see with Patrick Brown, within, probably within 30 minutes, um, but certainly within hours. So that's how this court runs. I mean, per perfectly fine by Jagmeet Singh, right? But the role the media is playing, they're nothing but scandal mongers now, chasing a story, competing with the internet. They're competing with Twitter and Facebook and all this. The quality of our news is no longer something where we can actually say, even in mainstream, that they have followed ethics, that the people reporting it can be trusted to bring us factual news. In fact, I have seen some of these reporters trying to build stories of, you know, scandal against individuals who have done nothing to investigate any of the facts on the complaints that they could have investigated. There's things they could have found out in five minutes that would negate the story that they're being told. They are doing no investigation. I don't think the mainstream media has the right anymore to ask us to trust them, that somebody is credible. I think we need to set rules now for this court of public opinion, and the arbitrators of facts are the journalists, and so they're going to have to be the ones implementing the rules. And it's really simple, right off the top. First rule, no more anonymous accusations. Nobody deserves to have their life destroyed by somebody who won't even put their name on it. I don't trust any of them. Anytime I see an anonymous allegation from this point forward, I automatically assume they're lying. We need to have some rules, and we need to really, really watch how this Me Too campaign is being used. It has now destroyed a fair election process. It has now interfered with our government. And again, reminder, Jagmeet Singh wants to be our next Prime Minister, and he thinks presumption of innocence is just a discussion. Now, there is a scandal. The scandal is not Patrick Brown and his choice of dating partners. The scandal is what the news hasn't been printing. They haven't told us that uh, our NDP leader doesn't care about the presumption of innocence, and they haven't been printing that Kathleen Wynne may have known about this in advance. This is so scandalous in terms of democratic process, so scandalous that I actually suggest that the Ontario election be put off until there's an investigation into how this happened. Oh yeah, and I think Patrick Brown should run as an independent and his platform should be bringing back charter rights.